Okay, here we go. Blue packet. Blue packet. No one talk. Okay, it's like all FRQs. They give you information and then they start asking questions. Uh, it's super important that you all get very good at identifying whether we're talking about an amount, a rate, or a rate of the rate. Let's see what we got here. So we have amount, rate. We're going to go to Mary to start here. As you read the problem, Mary, uh, does the problem discuss this information up here? This is not the question, this is just the information. Is that information discussing a rate, an amount, or a rate of the rate? So a good, let's keep talking for a minute. So time is, you're doing just fine. Time is a very common element, meaning many, many problems we'll talk about what's happening as time elapses. So we don't really pay attention to time. So what the date in the table is telling you what, Mary? What's it telling you? Yeah, it's not really degrees per day, it's like degrees on a given day. It's like saying you walk out to this pond, you put a thermometer in the pond, and it, from our, the thermometer reads 20 degrees. But then when you come back three days later, it reads 31. So there are temperatures, two points for Mary, we'll go to Brooklyn. So Brooklyn, are we talking about an amount, a rate at which that amount changes, or a rate at which the rate itself is changing? It's just an amount. It's just the temperature. It's not talking about how fast anything's changing. It's just the temperature. Two for Brooklyn. So in this column, I say this is degrees Celsius, and this is W of T. It's just an amount of temperature. Questions? OK, I don't remember. Last time, did I talk to you about what is meant by a model on the AP test? We talk about that. Okay, good. So they give us in the prop. Okay, all FRQs have this format. You have information and then you have questions. So now we're into the question. In the question, they say we have this formula P. So Anna, what is the symbol? What does WT represent, Anna? Temperature of the water. What does P of T represent, Anna? model for that temperature at time. Perfect. So two for Anna. So W of T and P of T are both representing temperature. They're both just amounts. Okay. So Stella, what is the difference between W of T versus P of T since they're both representing temperature of the water? It's like P of T like the equation for it. You're doing really well. W of T is literally like, think of this as a thermometer. You walk to the pond, you stick it in, and you measure. And then you write down the temperatures. P of T is some mathematician or engineer's concoction. Like he looked at these numbers and said, I bet I can create a formula that will look like that. So they do not give the exact same numbers. So don't mix that up. It's not like some problems where, the, in fact, for most of your whole life. When they've given you a formula, the table would match perfectly. The table does not match perfectly now. They're different, but they're close. Okay. Uh, two for Stella. So Kate, which is more precise, the values of W or the values of P? The table, because we actually measure. W is just our formula trying to match that. So it's an approximation for that. Two points. Pretty good. Awesome. Uh, then it says we're supposed to find P prime of 12. Uh, let's go to Gideon. Where would you put the symbol P prime of 12 in our little Danica's chart up there? Uh, rate. It's the rate. What would be the units, uh, Gideon? Uh, Celsius per day. Two points. So we have this. 
and we've got p prime here. We could also put w prime here. So we're supposed to find p prime of 12. Uh, we have a formula for p, so the way we do that is we just find a derivative. Now it's the written portion of the test, so we have to write things down properly. So please write on your paper. P prime of 12 is going to equal the derivative of P at a time of 12. That's what you have to write on your paper to get points. Question. Okay, the good news now is we don't have to do that derivative manually like we did in Unit 3. Uh, we can just grab our calculator. Type into Y1 our formula for P of T. Type into Y1 our formula for P of T. Go back to the main screen. I showed you this months ago. We haven't used it, so if you've forgotten, no big deal. Uh, math 8. Write it down. Questions. We'll go to Jacob. So Jacob, we have to include units. Here's a great way to make sure we have the right units. We just look at our computation. Uh, we're finding the change in P right here. This means find the change in P. So Jacob, what are the units for P? Celsius. Uh, uh -huh. Yep, the units of P are just degrees Celsius. So we have degrees Celsius in the numerator. And then Jacob, what would be the units for D of T? Time. Time, which is measured in what for this problem? Uh, days. So that's our correct units. Two for Jacob. Please. Oh, this one here. Uh, so far I really didn't care about the graph. If I did care, I would have used the problem to adjust the window. Uh, you tell me, Sabrina. What, what time period does the problem seem to be talking about? Uh, right, so I would do my window 0 to 15. Zoom. Anybody out? Okay, cool. Okay, listen. Quiet again. No one talk. Okay, the next part of the problem is new. You've not done this so far this year, but it's very common on the AP test. It says using appropriate units, using appropriate units, explain the meaning of our answer in terms of water temperature. Okay, on the test you take mid-January, this is going to be worth three points. And you either get three or you get zero. There's nothing in between. On the AP test, it's worth one point or zero. They don't give half points. To get full credit, You've got to make sure that you translate this math statement. This is all math language. That door is going to cause me to have a hard time. Um, you have to translate the math language into English language. Listen. 
you got to be very careful to not miss anything. So Ian will help me here. So we just start here, we just translate as we go across. So Ian, what does P represent again? Uh, and then specifically, what kind of amount for this problem? Temperature of the water. Perfect. So that's what you should start writing. You write the temperature of the water. Two points for Ian. We're just translating this sentence. So Ian has translated what P represents. P represents the temperature of the water. Uh, Maddox, what is the 12 representing? Add time 12. Good, and we have to include units, so what are the units for the 12? Days. Perfect. So the temperature of the water at T equal 12 days is, all right, so we've accounted for that. Um, we come over here. The negative has meaning. Claire, what is the negative telling us? No worries, two points. Hey, what's the negative telling us? Telling us the temperature is going down by 0.5 degrees Celsius. So negative just means the temperature is going down by 0.5 degrees Celsius every day. So at t equal 12 days, so the temperature of the water, t equal 12 days, is decreasing. Keyword, two for Haley. Is decreasing at a rate of uh, 0.549, don't put a negative, that would be a double negative, uh, degrees Celsius per day. That's our translation from the math language to the English language. Questions? Awesome. Mark the update the roll here real quick. Josh arrived. Tessa arrived. Paige has arrived. Cool. Uh, next one. Uh, you should be able to do this one by yourself because we talked about it last time. Go. Just stop me if you have a question. Go do the second one.
Okay, um, raise your hand please if you have this yellow box written on your paper. Two points. Question? Oh, please test it. Do you have the minus zero? No, if you just put one over 15, you're okay. You have two points for that. Um, I can't remember, did I give you a flashcard that said why we, yep, yes. and how we do intervals? Good, good, good. Uh, <coughs> Josh, what, did you get the decimal? What? Do you have the decimal number? No, I need to do it. Sam, do you have it? Yeah. What is it? Uh, negative 0.549. Negative 0.549? Uh, oh, do you mean? The oh, 25.7. There we go. <laughs> Somebody got that? Two more questions. Uh -huh. um, one second, Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn, what are the units for this? Yep, degrees Celsius, because we're finding an average temperature. We are finding an average temperature, two points. Okay, I um, want to do something together so that the formula makes a little better sense. Uh, you do need to concentrate. It's always in calculus, that's kind of a dumb thing to say. You always need to concentrate. Um, hey, look. When you put this in your calculator, this integral, here's what the calculator is going to do. Uh, it chooses a value for dt. There's a default setting. We could change that, but we just leave it alone so we get our questions right on the AP test because it's the setting they want us to use. But we could change that setting. For example, uh, we could do this. We could say, let's make dt 0.5. So if I want to show what the calculator is going to do, when it does that integral, so we've got the integral from so 1 over 15, the integral from 0 to 15 of p of t dt. I'm just calling people one by one. Be ready when I call on you. When you type that in the calculator, here's what the calculator does. It keeps track that it's got to multiply by 1 over 15, and then it goes to work. It takes this time of 0 and puts it into p, the formula p. It calculates p of 0. Ethan. Uh, Jensen, what is P of zero representing? P of zero is, recommen is representing uh, the function uh, x equals zero. Perfect. And the function P is representing what? Uh, like the y value. True. And in this case, it's the temperature of the water. Yeah. So this is the temperature of the water. Uh, three points for that answer. It's very good. That's the temperature of the water at time zero. Okay. The calculator multiplies that by its choice of dt, which I said is going to be 0.5. Okay? So now we'll go to Jackson. dt means change in time. So the calculator knows how much it's supposed to change time. The time was 0, now the time's 0.5. So it says plus, and what would the calculator do, Jackson? Um, P of 0.5 which is the temperature at time 0.5, multiplies that by 0.5 as well. Two points. Questions from anyone? Cool. Dylan, what's the next one going to be? Um, P of 1 times 0.5. Two points. Jesse, what's the next one? So dt means how much time changes. So we start with time of 0. Time changes by 0.5, we're now are doing the temperature at time 0.5. Time changes by 0.5 again, we're doing the temperature at time 1. There we go, two points. Okay, show me 1 to 5 how comfortable you are with this. This is what the calculator is doing. Does that make sense to you? Show me. 
This is exactly what the calculator is doing. And if it doesn't make sense, you just have to memorize it. That's what it does. Okay? It's like there's nothing really to explain. So it just goes all the way up to 15? It goes all the way to time 15. So stay with me. This temperature is covering the time from time 0 to time 0.5. Yeah. This temperature is covering, you know, the time from 0.5 to 1. So if we kept going here, there's a bit of a pattern. Ian's going to help me here. I don't want to write them all. There's too many. So do dot, dot, dot. What's the very last line going to say, Ian? Yep, times plus <coughs> multiplied by two points. Now we're done. We've covered the entire time period from times. We've covered the entire 15 minutes. Do you agree with that, Ian? Yeah. Two more questions. We've covered the entire 15 minutes. We have sampled the temperature at many different times. Everyone raise your hand and tell me. Do the math. How many different temperatures did we sample? I put it in a pattern so you can calculate it quicker. How many different temperatures were sampled in this process? If we sampled the temperature at many different times. We're adding them all together. How many different temperatures were sampled? You can do it. I have to use my fingers, but, you know, count. How many different temperatures? Come on, more hands. How many different temperatures? Let's go, Caleb. There are 30 temperatures on the board. How many new? Two points. Okay. Three for Caleb. That means, I hope this gets to your question, Brooklyn. We are supposed to be adding up 30 different temperatures and dividing by 30. Here's how we get 30. Every, different, every temperature was also multiplied by 0.5. That means you can factor out the 0.5 and put it in front. Raise your hand, please. Don't say it out loud. What is a fraction? You can use your, you use your calculator if you want. What's a fraction that is equivalent to... Wow. <laughs> what? Now I can't even think. Um, what is a fraction that is equivalent to 0.5, don't say it out loud, 0.5 divided by 15, looking for hands, hands up. What's a fraction that's the same thing as 0.5 divided by... Here we go, dot, 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 P of 14.5. What's the fraction that is exactly the same thing as 0.5 over 15? There we go, Brooklyn. 1 over 30. 1 over 30. So that's how the calculator is able to add up 30 different values of temperature and divide by 30. It's just an average. Yeah, it, and it's not like a kind of average, it's an exact average. And it's a really, to me, it's a, <laughs> it's a super interesting formula because you can choose dt to be anything you want and the formula still works. You make dt smaller, the calculator has to do more computations, but it still divides by the right number. Two more, please. Um, because I was gone last time, I'm not sure. Is, is the 1 over 15 denoting something that's actually multiplied by the integral or something, or is it just telling it to calculate over what? Like, Gotcha. It's definitely a multiple. Yeah, because like if you look at this work here, the only way I can get 30 things added up and then divide by 30 is to get the right number out front here. So the 15 is an essential multiplier. That's yeah, how we get the right division. Two more. Are we good? Oh, please, Ethan. If you were just to enter the like, integral on your calculator and then divide it by 15, will that lead to errors in the future? I know it's the same thing. Yeah, multiplying by 1 over 15 or dividing by 15, same thing. Two points. Okay, next thing. Okay, so that's done. Next one. Uh, you all should be able to do that when you go. Stop me if you want to ask something.
Okay, please raise your hand if you have the yellow box written on your paper. So, in the air, it's 242 feet. Two points. Questions? So we're just estimating that the temperature of the water is decreasing on day seven by about 1.3 degrees Celsius every day. Please, Paige. Can you leave it in fraction form? Uh, to, the best thing to do is to write the yellow box and nothing more. If you write more, all you are doing is the following. Like the grader is going to grade your test. The grader will read the yellow box, and uh, one or two, I don't know which, kind of varies. They'll write plus two, okay? Then if they read the next line and you make an error, they go, oh, never mind. Cross that back out. <laughs> but if you don't even write the next line, they have no, they can't, so you just get the two. So you just want to stop at the yellow. So two per page. Anybody else? Next one. Uh, you should be able to do this one too. Go. Uh, who has the yellow box written on their paper? Yellow. Look at it. Make sure you have exactly the yellow. If you have exactly the yellow, you will get a point on the test. Three on my test. <coughs> Questions? And then after the yellow, you have to write the purple. Who has the purple written on their Two more. Okay. So I gave you both flashcards. Yes, the one that says why we need to do an integral and then how to calculate the integral. The yellow box is why. Uh, the yellow box is we're finding the average water temperature um, for that time period. The purple box is the how. We are doing it with a Riemann sum. So, questions? Please. So, did I give you the flashcard that says uh, average value of f of x? You have this card? If you don't write it down now, it's good to times Z. So the card should say on the front, average value of f of x. So average value of f of x for some time period, you know, like x equal 3 to x equals 7 or something. So that's the front of the card. The back of the card should say, you take one over, <coughs> this is Dylan's question, you subtract you know, seven minus three, 
multiplied by the integral from 3 to 7 of f itself. That's how we use an integral to calculate the average value of many different values of f. So we're doing the same thing here. It says find the average temperature using w. So we want to take values of w. We want to add them up. So that's what this is doing right here. This is a sum of the temperatures from 3 to 15 of W. That adds up the temperatures. And like we just showed a few minutes ago, DT in combination with the 1 over 12 will make sure we divide by how many temperatures we add up. Please. Uh -huh. Two more questions? Please. So, the problem here, so unless it's specified, do we ever need to give an answer for this written test? Or will it always just be like give the equation? If, good question. So, if they ask you to do a computation on your calculator, like uh, this one here, not that one. So, like right here, we were able to just type it in our calculator. They expect the decimal. You cannot stop at just the yellow box. Uh, by contrast, though, and like this one here as well, come on. So again, we were able to type this into our calculator. So they will expect to see the decimal answer. But if we're just doing like add, subtract, multiply, divide, you don't want to keep going. You want to stop. Just leave it like that. Same thing here, Riemann sum, just leave it. Unless they say something like, round your final answer to the nearest degree. Then you have to go further. Two more. Anybody else? Please, Ethan. For the red section, you need to write that yellow section, that yellow part. You do. If you don't write the yellow box, they will take away a point. Uh, they're usually going to give three points for this problem, one point for the yellow box, and then two points for the purple. So in my test, I multiply everything by three. So this yellow box would be three points, and the purple would be six. Two more. How many FIQs are on that? So it's not strictly defined, but it's I can give you pretty close. There are technically six FRQs, free response questions. But every free response question usually has parts A through D. Sometimes only A through C, once in a while just A and B. So if you kind of take what typically happens every year, 6 times 4 would be 24, but they don't all have four parts, so it's more like 20 questions. But then it gets even fuzzier, because sometimes each question has multiple parts kind of in it. And so I would say it's more like you're doing about 35 different things in the FRQ section. It's pretty close. Multiple choice, there's 45 questions. So by the time you do all the things the FRQ asks you to do, it's getting up there about the same. So does that help a little? Yeah. Okay. It is kind of fuzzy, like I say, how it defines. But uh, point-wise, they're equal. Same number of points available in the FRQ as in the multiple choice section. Exactly the same. Anybody else? Well, oh, please. Just so that I know, like specifically what they want, um, would we? Uh, is it just 1 over 12 that works, or like 1 over 15 minus 3 works since I've like done 15 minus 0 in the past? Just like, just uh, I, wish, I will often show the 15 minus 0 just to emphasize the formula, okay. like this. So you can keep being, you know, so I keep reminding you where the numbers came from, but they're okay either way. Okay. Two for Jacob. Oh, yeah. Anybody else? Okay, next one. Okay, cool. New idea. It says, what is the acceleration of the object? We learned way back in unit one, that if I take the derivative of velocity, I can find the acceleration. So just write that down. Tell them what you're finding. Acceleration at time four. Tell them how you find it. You take the derivative of velocity at time four. Questions. 
And now, back to um, Hunter's question, I have the capability to compute a decimal answer with my calculator quickly, so they expect me to do it. So math eight and type right down, write down the answer. As soon as somebody has the answer, tell me what it is. I'll pay you first one. Please test it. Negative point five two four. Oh, baby. Not only are you not Two points for Tessa. Questions? Correct. So we put the velocity in Y1. And learn if you can learn to talk in more specific terms, you will score better. Like I don't ever say equation. I mention what equation I'm referencing. So the velocity. <coughs> It really does help your test score if you can learn to speak very specific. Name the equation, tell me whether it's the time, whether it's the velocity, whether it's the x, whether it's the y, etc. So, questions? Please. Would, be the, would there be any units for it or not? Uh, because they didn't give any units, you're not required to, look, to write any. Uh, a common unit would be, velocity would be in meters per second. And then the acceleration would be meters per second every second. Two for Jason. Here we go. Did you ever figure out how to score? On your pick? No, it's okay. You've got to figure that out eventually, but okay. That's all right. We'll get there. Okay. Um, in the buff packet, it had a little statement that said if you want to calculate the total distance traveled by an object you should integrate the absolute value of the velocity so that's it just integrate the absolute value of the velocity and write it down this is the money problem on the test this is worth three points just for that maybe two I can't remember that's it just do it Oh, oh, thank you. Absolute value, uh, I know two pathways. The one I like to use is I go second catalog. So that's second, and then the zero key. Absolute value is the very first one on the list. Two for Haley. Anybody else? Please, Jessica. So what we'll do is we want to, uh, so let's see, 2002, 3C, one second. So what I do first, Jessica, is I load into Y1, my formula for velocity. Oh, I was just wondering. Oh, sorry. No, you're, I was just wondering when you know how to use Oh, my bad, my bad. Um, if you, the buff packet, this is reviewing, two for Jessica. If you integrate velocity alone, you are calculating displacement. If you integrate absolute value of velocity, you're calculating total distance traveled. Everybody watch, look up here, follow this story. Here's an object. Here's the origin. If the object starts over here, say time zero, and the object is at location six, okay, and it moves to the right until it gets to location 10, then it moves back to the left until it gets to location four. And let's say that takes a total of five seconds. Raise your hand, please. What is the displacement of the object? One hand. You can do it. What is the displacement of the object for those five seconds of time? What is the, started at six, right here. Went to 10, came back to four, stopped right there at four at time equal five. It doesn't necessarily stop, but that's where it is at time equal five. What is the displacement of the object? Hands up, there we go. What's the displacement, Maddox? Two. The displacement is negative two because we have to indicate that we are two left of where we were. 
Not for displacement. Displacement, because Maddox, what would be the difference? Oh, here, let's stop. How many got negative two? Two points, okay. Where would the particle have ended up if the displacement had been two? Hands up, come on. Where would the particle have ended up, Maddox, if the displacement were two? Six. Eight. Eight, eight. eight is better. How many got eight? Two more. So is negative important when you're talking about displacement, yes or no? Yes. 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 Hands up. For the story we did initially, the particle starts at six, it goes to the right until it gets to ten. Then the particle comes back until it gets to four. Hands up, what's the total distance traveled? So the displacement here was negative two. What is the total distance traveled? Hands up. What's the total distance traveled, uh, Riley? Ten. So let's see, we went four that way, and then six back, total distance traveled is 10. How many got 10 for the total distance traveled? Two points. Say it out loud, yes or no. Did we care about negatives when we were calculating total distance traveled, yes or no? No. 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 Jessica, I lost you a little bit, my bad. Oh, because you go back to the right. Yeah, okay. you're good. <laughs> Sam, question. Um, um, I have a question on three. I think my calculator is going to be zero one. I'll come look in a second. Just don't let me forget. Okay, look. Hey, don't get them mixed up. Total distance traveled means you integrate the absolute value of the velocity. Displacement means you integrate just the velocity. Because if we want displacement, we have to keep track of negatives. We can't have an absolute value. We want total distance traveled. We don't want any negatives. That's why we use absolute value. Question. I forgot who asked the question, but I don't know if I can. You good? Okay. Two more for Jessica. All right, next one. I'll be back there in a second, Sam. Okay. They want to know the position of the object at time equal four. In the buff packet, we learned about the most important formula in all of AP calculus. That formula is the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, to solve this problem, you're going to have to use the fundamental theorem. You have to be a very good. So, the fundamental theorem says if I integrate velocity, I can calculate displacement. Let's see, the times I seem to be interested in are time zero and time four. So let's integrate from time zero to time four, the velocity. That's one way of calculating displacement. The fundamental theorem says there's another way you can calculate displacement. You simply compare positions. So this formula is the most tested formula on the entire test. No, you can't, in other words, say you will earn more points by understanding this formula than by understanding anything else. Questions? So Jack. At this moment, do we know the value of any of these three terms here? Perfect. So instead of writing x of 0, I can write 2. So now I have the integral from 0 to 4 of the velocity. Two points for Jack. The same thing as x of 4, subtract 2. Cool? Questions? Let's go to Maddie. Uh, does it appear we have any way to find either of these, Maddie, the value of this integral or the value of x of 4? Perfect, because we have a calculator. And we have the formula for velocity. So if I type that in my calculator, cheating a little bit here, I'm going to get this number. 
1.432. Just keep using my equal sign. Two points for Maddie. Questions? Cool. So, Lexi, what would you do now? Uh, then I would add the two on the left side. And then we found x of 4. Two points. So now we know the position of the object at time 4. Questions? Solid. Good work, Sam. Sweet. Moving on. Question says, at time equal 4, is the object speeding up or slowing down? Justify our answer. Uh, different ways to solve this, but here's the easiest way. Let's go find the velocity at time 4. So write on your paper, V of 4. Now we need our calculator. So come back here, go second quit, get to the main screen. The velocity is stored in Y1. So we want to go find that velocity. So that means we go alpha trace, choose Y1, at, that's what parentheses means, time 4. Done. Questions? Please, Phil. Um, would you need to clarify that it's slowing down or is the number uh, uh, So far, hey, uh, be careful. The negative, two for Dylan. The negative does not say the object is slowing down. Everybody, what is the negative telling us? Come on, hands, everybody. What does the negative mean? Come on. Key to the AP test is you got to know what the numbers mean. Like you spent, I'm sorry, but you spent like 12 years of your life manipulating numbers and they don't, no one's really forced you to understand the meaning. Uh, the numbers are no interest to me unless they have some meaning. So what does the negative mean, Dylan? How many new? Two points. So Dylan, does it tell us that the object is speeding up or slowing as it goes left? It doesn't tell us, just says it's going left. Now I'm gonna round a little bit. We'll just say it's going left 0.9 meters every second. Okay? Yeah. To figure out whether the object's speeding up or slowing down, we need to compare velocity with acceleration. Warning. Acceleration alone never tells you whether it's speeding up or slowing down. It's doing one or the other, but it doesn't tell you which one. Okay? The reason that's confusing to people is because in kind of modern speak, we don't ever talk about negative velocity. So if we say the car is accelerating, we, that means it's speeding up. It's because we don't think about negative velocity. For calculus, you've got to delete that from your memory. So we need to go find the acceleration. So write on your paper, A of 4. Again, it's the written test. You've got to write things. You can't just find them. You find acceleration by doing derivative of velocity. We're going to find that at time equal 4. Questions? So do it on your calculator quick. First one that gets the number gets the points. Go deal, what do you got? Questions? Two points for Dylan. Okay, now we're going to do a little story here to hopefully make sense of this. We're going to round the numbers so talking is easier. So we're going to say here's our time, and we're at time equal 4, and our velocity at that time is negative 0.9. Our acceleration at that time is going to be uh, negative 0.5. The acceleration number tells you how the velocity number changes. So 
if we think in terms of basic units, this is 0.9 meters per second. This is negative 0.5 meters per second every second. So I'll say it as many times as I need for it to make sense to you. But this number here is saying, hey, your velocity is going to become 0.5 more negative than it presently is. How long is it going to take for that to happen? It's going to take one second. That's what the number means. Your velocity is going to become 0.5 meters per second more negative than it presently is. That's what acceleration means. Questions? So if that's true, all of you should be able to raise your hand and tell me if that really is true, what will be the velocity at time five? Hands up. So I'll say it one more time, keep your hands up. This number here is telling you, just I'm just reading the number. It says, hey, this number here, the velocity, is going to change. How much? Oh, it's going to become 0.5 more negative. 0.5 more negative meters per second in one second. So what's the new velocity at time five? Hands up. There we go. What is the new velocity at time five, Drex? Negative 1.4. So negative 1.4 meters per second would be my new velocity because my velocity has become 0.5 meters per second, 0.5 meters per second more negative than it was. How many new? Two points. Three for Drex. So say, oh yeah, please, Evan, please. Could you theoretically just plug in time five into your Into? Um, the, like just into the E formula? Into the velocity? Yeah. Uh, the reason they won't give you points if you do that is they want to know if the particle is speeding up or slowing down precisely at that moment. Okay. And if I find out what the velocity is at time five, <laughs> I don't know if it actually slowed down first and then sped up. Okay. Did that make sense? Yeah. So they want you to focus on just time four, no other times. Like any method you use that focuses on any time other than four is not going to work. So two points. So just say it out loud. Is the particle speeding up or slowing down? Say it. Speeding up. Speeding up. It's going to the left. It's going faster and faster to the left. Questions? Please, Ethan. So would it be okay to think if they're both negative at speeding up or if they're both positive at speeding up? Uh, please memorize what Ethan just said. He's going to make this nice sign for me. I just got to think about his slogan now. Um, no, really, that's perfect. If the signs of velocity and acceleration are the same at any given moment, particles speeding up, like they're reinforcing each other. The velocity is negative already. Acceleration negative means it's going to become more negative. Yep. If the signs match, speeding up, signs different, slowing down. So would the acceleration from the velocity is negative 1.4 would be negative 0.9? Because uh, negative 0.5 is, uh, I don't know. No, not necessarily. The acceleration, we'd have to go find it on our calculator again. And hey, we must be honest with you. What we demonstrated here doesn't really happen because the acceleration doesn't stay at this value for any amount of time. So that, that simple computation is not usually possible, but it is the right concept. So, two person payment. Anybody else? Solid. Yeah, memorize what Ethan said. If the signs of velocity and acceleration match, the particle will be speeding up at that moment, otherwise slowing down. Oh, and hey, there we go. Look. We have to justify our answer. When you read the words justify your answer, that's a signal. You must write a sentence. If you don't write a sentence, they don't give you the point. So we just write Ethan's sentence. You say, uh, let's see, V of four and A of four are, pos are negative. So, the particle
is slowing down. Ah, shoot. How many heard the air? So the particle is speeding up. At time equal four. Question? <coughs> Please. Um, on the brand section of the test, can we write abbreviations like neg, or do we need to write all out? Uh, you can write some abbreviations. Uh, I try hard when we start practicing for the written like we are now to use abbreviations that are legal. Mm -hmm. And I try to avoid abbreviations that are I'm not sure about. Okay. Good point. Anybody else? Solid. Next one. Okay. It says that time equal four is the object moving toward the origin or away from the origin. Justify your answer. Uh, this is very similar to Ethan's comment about positives and negatives. Uh, the, big, the big concept here is this. You have a particle that's moving along some path like you see here. Um, let's ignore the numbers there for a minute just to talk in more simple terms. So let's get rid of those. That's not what I want. That's not what I want either. That, no, brother. <laughs> it's an exciting day. Um, that is very pleasing to do that. Um, if you're feeling stressed, just come to my room at lunch and you can just do that all day long. <laughs> it's very soothing. It really is. I promise. It's just going really like It feels so nice. <laughs> It's pleasant. <laughs> I messed it up over there. Though. Okay, and now it's not pleasant anymore. Um, That's <laughs> and the rest of the great white. Yeah, the rest of the great white. No. Like no. There we go. Okay. Sweet. Here's the big idea. Here's the big. <laughs> Here is the big idea. You have an object, hey. You have an object that's moving along a line, okay? They want to know, at a certain time, is the object moving towards or away from the origin? Let's do a couple of scenarios. If the object at time four just happens to be over here, back to the small pen, the object at time four happens to be here, Raise your hand, please. Don't say it out loud. Knowing that the object is here, actually just say yes or no together as a class. Knowing that the object is located here at time four, um, yes or no. Can we determine from that information alone whether the object is moving towards the origin or if the object is moving away from the origin at that time? Just say yes or no. Say it. Yes. yes. Oh, we got a mix. So all we know, one more time, listen close, just think about it, you can do it. All we know is that at time four, that's where the particle is. That's all we know. That's all we know. We know the position of the object at time four, in my little made up example here, is like, I don't know, negative 12 or something. Meaning it is 12 meters from the origin on the left side. Okay. Say yes or no. Given that information alone, do we know whether the particle at that moment is just sitting still, whether it's moving left or moving right? Do we know that, yes or no? No. no. Better, we don't. Raise your hand now, don't say that loud. What additional information are we needing to determine whether the particle is sitting still, moving left towards the origin, or moving right away from the origin? What piece of information would be very helpful to add to this situation, they go, oh, now I know. Where? Acceleration. Close. Acceleration just tells us how the velocity changes, so we don't really need that. We do need the velocity. velocity. How many new? Two points, two for credit. We need the velocity. 
So again, this is a made up example. I'm trying to get you to understand the idea, not all the details, just the idea. As always, if you get the big idea, the details become easy. It's when people try to do it the other way around, it's a nightmare. Like, like oh, I don't want the big idea, just show me the steps. Like, yeah, don't. Okay. It causes anxiety. <laughs> Sorry, I have to fix that. Hold on just one moment here. Just fix the anxiety for a moment. <laughs> there we go. Soothing. Okay. Cool. <laughs> if I tell you the velocity <laughs> if I tell you the velocity at time four is negative five meters per second. Raise your hand, please. Do we now know whether the object is sitting still, moving towards the origin, or away from the origin at time four? Hands up. What do we know? What do we know? Oh, Ethan. It's moving away. How many agree? Two points. One to five of it makes sense. Show me. One to five of it makes sense. Two points, OK? This number here, just let's make sense of this. So Sabrina, help me. This number here tells you one thing and one thing only. What is that number telling you, Sabrina? That uh, position of, okay, wait, the position at time equals four is negative 12. Good. So, so does that number tell you whether the particle is on the right side of the origin or the left? Left. You good with that? It's perfect. So this tells me the particle is on the left side of the origin. At that same moment, the particle is this number. Don't look at the negative. Does this number, Sabrina, tell you that the particle is moving or stopped? Um, moving five meters every second. The negative means it's moving left five meters every second. Okay. So it's sitting here. It's not sitting. It's just, you know, if we, if we look at it, we see it there. But at that moment, it's moving away from the origin. Okay, I was thinking that it was at negative five to be. I don't know. Oh, I got you. That makes sense. You good? Mm -hmm. Two more. Anybody else? Give me one to five. How's it feel? Come on, show me. Be honest. Two points. Good job. Um, so, new scenario. I tell you the position of the object at time 20 happens to be location, I don't know, 18. And I tell you that at that moment, the velocity is negative two meters per second. Hands up, is the object moving towards the origin or away? Towards or away? Let's go, Charity. So let's break it down. So Charity, the 18, like, like what is this telling you right here? All the details, what does that mean? That at time 20, the position is at 18. Good. Time 20, the position is 18, so am I right or left of the origin at time 20? Right. Good. I'm over here right of the origin at time 20. Right of the origin at time 20. Velocity. Is the object stopped or moving, Charity? It's moving. It's moving. The negative means which way? Perfect. So is it going towards the origin or away? Perfect. How many new? Two points. Two more for Charity. Question? One to five. Come on, show me. How does that feel? I, if you do low and I don't see it, do something like this so I see it, okay? Good work. Okay. Questions? Awesome. So Ethan. You said that if the signs of the velocity and acceleration were the same, the object is speeding up. The idea here is awful similar. Yes. If the signs of position <coughs> and velocity are the same, what do we know, Ethan? It's moving away. From it's moving away. The signs of position and velocity are different. It's moving towards. So to solve the problem, that's what we got to figure out. Pretty good? Cool. So we got to go figure that out. Oh, wait a minute, we already figured out this is how FRQs work. You sometimes find something, it's not that common, but once in a while you find something in a previous part that you now need. Uh, hands up, somebody remind me. What was the, 
Oh, we did it right here. Here we go. The position of the object at time 4 was that. We figured it out earlier. So we know x of 4 is that, because we've already done it. Oh, we found velocity at 4 also, did we not? Yes. Somebody has it written down somewhere. What is it, Anna? That's negative 0.866. There we go. Raise your hand now, please. You have to write these both down to get the points on the test. But once these are both written down, say it again, Anna, sorry. Uh, negative 0.866. Okay, hands up. Is the particle moving away or towards the origin? Hands up. Is the particle moving away or towards Maddox? Toward. So is the object on the left or right side of the origin, Maddox? Right side. It's on the right side. It's over here. Is it moving or stopped? Moving. Yeah, because it has a velocity. But the velocity being negative means moving left, hence towards the origin. How many new? Two, two more for Maddox. Anybody? <coughs> okay, it says justify your answer, so got to have a sentence. So you must show these two values, otherwise my sentence won't make any sense. Now you write x of 4 is positive, as I said to carry on, abbreviation there is legal, and v of 4 is negative. So, the particle <coughs> is moving towards the origin. I just remembered that earlier in the packet we had found it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if it was an actual FRQ, the way the FRQ booklet is built is it's a booklet. So you're going to see something like this, two full pages. And what you would have seen on this particular problem is you would have noticed that, oh, wait a minute, over here in part A, I already found X of 4. Okay. Yeah, good question. More or just go? Next page. Uh, do that one on your own. Go. Stop me if you have anything you want to talk about. Uh, raise your hand, please, if you have the yellow box written on your paper. Two points. Uh, Stella, do you have the decimal? Yeah, it's 0.358. Say it slower, sorry. 0.358. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you have the correct decimal written on your paper. Two more. Okay. 
Please. Do we have to write the average velocity for zero to t? This part here? Yeah. I have to be honest, you don't. I've just noticed as I've been helping people that a fair number are getting lost in the computations. Like, I want to keep reminding you what we're doing. And I've actually made something like, look, you missed the question. You got to get better at keeping track of what you're doing. So for retake prep, I have said to some people, yeah, you really need to write it. Like, you're just forgetting what's going on. But in this case, no, it's not required. Two points. For this one, um, would it be required for us to find the actual number that is calculate? Yes, thank you. If you can find the integral or the derivative on your calculator, they do expect you to find it. Two points. You listen close to the homework instructions. Um, as always, I'm trying to go as fast as we can to May 8th. But I hope you understand this whole 1-5 thing. I really am trying to make sure nobody is lost. Like, I want you all to get there successfully. Um, I will ask you on Wednesday, so I'll see you again on Monday and then Wednesday. I'll ask you on Wednesday if you finish the blue, but we really want to talk some more about it. Okay, so if you get started on the blue, there should be a good number of things you can do. But there might be a few places where you get stuck, so don't worry about those, just move on. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the blue on Monday, plus we'll also get into the golds. The extra examples don't have answers, so it's a little hard to verify. Yeah.